Hi guys. Um, so this is going to be a short lecture, but I do want to give you some kind of discussion lecture over this text because I know it's it's a, an interesting structure. It's probably not like anything you've read before. Um, it's the subject matter is a little bit difficult, um, but it's a very interesting text to read and kind of break down in terms of analysis. So you guys have looked at um, you, you'll be looking at this text through one of kind of three lenses. You'll be looking either at a character, a theme, or an approach when you do your essay. Um, so I kind of want to analyze it in that in that frame. So um, when you're looking at a text, you really want to look at sort of one of the major literary elements. So it could be something like theme, could be structure, could be character. Um, it could be something like the, the specific literary devices that are used. Um, and in this case, because we have seven, I think seven different um, uh, narrators, you're getting seven different stories. And each one has little context clues about what it is that you're supposed to be thinking about that character, the society that's, that the story is taking place, the setting. Um, or the approach that you could be looking at this with from like a literary analysis perspective. Um, so when you're doing an analysis of this text, you don't want to simply restate what happens. That's not an analysis, that's a summary. So you don't want to say, first there was this testimony, then there was this one, then there was this one, this is what they said. Um, instead, you want to think about topics or general ideas that you can structure your analysis around, thinking about how maybe two or three of these different um, narratives cross over on that central idea. Um, so when we're looking, for example, at the very first one, we as, as the reader have a couple things that tell us um, something about this, this text and, and where it's set and the characters that are involved. So we know that the only person who is consistent throughout these different narrations is the high police commissioner. So we have one person that these different um, narrators are talking to. And within each, we're having the first person point of view. So we're having the word I used. Um, and the way that they describe what happens differs based on who they are. Um, so we know just at the opening, there was a body found, but we don't know the gender. We don't know anything about it. Um, we just know it was a body found. Um, off this road, and we're learning obviously that this is a, a, a Japanese um, area, and we have little indications of the culture. So we have things like the kimono, silk, the headdress, certain styles, the sword, um, the bamboo. So we know it's an, a rural area. Um, and this man is pretty straightforward, he's the woodcutter. So you're getting the, the feeling that what he says is, I did this, I found this, I saw this, no, the blood wasn't doing. So you're understanding that he's answering questions that are being asked um, and that it's very uh, much a plot-driven narrative here. Um, you do get a quote by the police commissioner, which I don't believe you get through the rest of the text, which is interesting. Um, but he basically sets up the setting for us. We know what's happening where. There's a body found in a, a, rural, a rural area. Um, and this seems to be sometime in like feudal Japan. Um, so that's the exposition for us. When you're thinking about the structure, we're looking at the climbing action right now, the rising action. Um, so we get a second view from this Buddhist. Um, he's a traveling Buddhist. The language is different here. We have much more introspective language. We have things like um, similes being used. So it talks about life being as ev evanescent as the morning dew or a flash of lightning. So very fleeting. Um, and they're much more emotional. And what this does is, is kind of frame who it was that was murdered. Yes, I saw that it was the unfortunate man on the road. So we know it's a man. Um, and we see the, that there's another character, there's a woman in this, in this narrative, um, and she has these elements, the, the description, the imagery that's used, um, is kind of setting up the, the, the beauty of this woman. She has a scarf, she has colors of her clothes, 
The horse was fine, has fine mane. Um, we get that she's petite. So all of these little things are kind of setting up that she's, you know, a, a sort of very elegant young woman. Um, he says, since I'm a Buddhist priest, though, he wasn't attracted to her. He didn't notice those a lot of that those details. But he did notice that the man was armed um, and had 20 arrows in his quiver. So we know that there's some kind of defense mechanism uh, available here. So there's a relationship between these two people. We have this beautiful sort of Im imagery that's used. Um, and this first thematic concept is that life is very fleeting. Um, so that could be a theme that you choose to analyze in the text. In the, anal in the analysis, I, I, what I, again, I don't want you to do is go one by one by one, but that's what I'm doing here to kind of explain the story. So for example, if you're going to talk about the fleeting nature of life as your theme, um, you might say, you might talk about your first main idea it could be something about why, um, you know, youth is waste is, is so fleeting and needs to be whatever protected or something like that. Um, and you could bring in the Buddha, a bit about what the Buddha says. You could bring in what the, the young man, the dead man says, you could bring in what the wife says. Um, there's a lot of things you can kind of tie into that beam. So again, I'm just going through this for clarity in this in this respect, but I don't want you to do this in your actual analysis. Um, but the the next one that we see is the policeman who. So we get that there's a crime happening. There's there's something going on, and um, we get his perspective, um, and we understand that there was a man who was arrested. He fell off a horse post um, crime, and his name is Tom, Tajo, uh, I'm sorry, Tajomaru, and um, we get some background on Tajamaru here. We understand that he was wearing the silk. Um, he has a sword. Um, this is a policeman, so the, the description is very clear and straightforward. It's It's got some description, but it's not necessarily, um, say, looking at the nature of human humanity. Um, we understand that he had a weapon. He had fallen off his horse. Um, he had some things with him, which may or may not have been his, but we understand also that some background, he had tried to be arrested before, um, and was unsuccessful and, um, with him, you know, there's some history. So we know that, um, there was, a uh, some women who were murdered in a previously in a temple, um, and that he was the suspect. So we're getting some understanding of his character here. And then we come in from the old woman, and she uh, she tells us that this is the woman whose daughter married the young man on the road, um, and that we get their names, um, and we understand that he's supposedly a very gentle person, um, and she is fun, spirited, loving, but very innocent. Um, so we get a, a good description of what she looks like. Um, there's a lot of descriptive language in this section. And we understand that she understands that the son-in-law may have been lost, but she, you know, wants to know what happened to her daughter. And then we see this emotion coming. We see a bit of the family structure and the relationship structure. So there's an interesting gender dynamic happening. There's an interesting socio, um, social structure happening here that we could talk about. We could talk about the family structure in feudal Japan and why that's so important culturally. Um, there's a lot of things we could talk about with this type of um, confession. Then we get the, the supposed killer's confession, the robber. Um, and he tells us this much longer confession about what happened. He saw this woman, the man, he saw an opportunity to rob them, but he saw her face when the scarf um, blew back and realized he had to have her. So in a, a very sort of nefarious way, he's telling the story. Um, he tells them how he tricked them. And he brought the man to a grove, telling him there was, um, you know, elements that, that, he had, that were available, like mirrors and swords, fancy items. But he does say one thing, which is very interesting, which we have the, the criminal perspective. But he's saying this man would not have been tricked had he not been so greedy. The wife wanted to say but he wanted to go see the treasures. So he's, as, as an ironic, there's irony in this statement where he's saying, isn't greed terrible? Um, so basically he took them, he says he tied him up, and, um, and unfortunately, you know, 
while the woman did try to fight, you know, he did end up taking advantage of her. And at the end, this is the part where a bit of um, uh, confusion sort of sets in about exactly what happened between the different narratives. And she, he says that once he did that, that she said she would either her husband or him had to die. She couldn't have the shame of both men seeing what had happened or knowing what had happened. And he says that he fell in love with her in that moment and wanted to make her his wife. Um, and that he tried to do the fair thing. He didn't want to kill the man, but he tried to do the fair thing. He untied him, supposedly had a battle with him. Um, and that the man was very impressive, a warrior, which we know from the, the items that he was carrying with him. Um, and that he had 23, oops, 23 different strokes before he died. And of course, he says that he won. Ha ha ha. And we get these sort of little indications of his character. Um, but again, I want you to make sure that you are taking in the figurative language that is being used. Um, he says, you know, even if I were to be struck by lightning and these sort of hyperbolic statements, we get that this man has a very over-the-top way of recounting this this um, thing and, and clearly thinks a lot of himself. And then at the end, he says, that is my confession. Hang me in chains for the maximum penalty. But he's defiant. Um, and then we see the woman who has come to the temple, which we realize is the woman who... Um, whose husband was was killed, um, and she the way she tells her story is much different, and she has a lot of descriptive language and a lot of emotional language, um, and says that she couldn't leave her husband to die with the shame of seeing what had happened, um, and that his eyes were cold and and distant and. Um, could you know had lost all respect for her? So there's an interesting element, a cultural element here about honor and and shame and how that plays into the culture and gender dynamics. Um, and that he his she couldn't speak because his his um, mouth was gagged with the bamboo leaves, but that his eyes basically said kill him because he couldn't deal with the shame. And then she ran away. Um, and you see the grief and the the guilt um, in here. She tried to kill herself, she says, um, due to the shame, but couldn't do it. And then lastly, we get the story of the man, the murdered man. And this is told, again, via a medium. So we don't get a first-person narrative here. We're getting a second-person recount. So we don't know the validity and this unreliable narrator that we've had throughout all of these different tales Um really culminates here and we see supposedly the dead man's tale of how the wife essentially um, betrayed him and that she once things were happening realized that she couldn't marry the the robber um, if you know her, her her honor had been shamed so she had to kill the husband um, and that he, he offered to kill her and she ran away. Um, and that the, the robber offered to kill her and ran away. Um, and then he supposedly, the robber mumbled something like, my fate is next and just disappeared into the grove. So nothing happened to the wife. Um, and ultimately that he stood up, was able to cut himself, or he was cut free, stood up. And um, because of the, the betrayal of his wife, stabbed himself so you get this this interesting description of the mountains and the setting and the silence and how he kind of becomes one with nature at the end um in his own silence but um at the end there is supposedly someone who comes up and and takes the, the knife out of his breast which we don't know who it is um so we're left to speculate about who that could be so there are a lot of different things you can think about when you're looking at this text um I would suggest if you're looking at characterization, look at how the characters develop, look at the idea of the unreliable narrator, look at um, you know who is the protagonist, who is the antagonist, and how can you tell what in their narrative tells you or helps you show or prove that they are a protagonist or an antagonist. Um, if you're looking at a theme, there's a lot of themes in here you could think about. You could look at um, the idea of honor, the idea of shame. You could look at the idea of um, truth. What is truth? Is truth, uh, you know, objective? Is it subjective? Um, 
you could look at the idea of um, uh, social dynamics between, you know, different um, genders or different uh, social structures. If you did an approach, you could look at it from, from a specific gendered approach. You could look at a feminist approach. You could look at um, uh, a cultural approach, a historical approach, looking at the culture itself. Um, and what we are being told and the details around the culture. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could analyze this and a lot of things you could say. But again, don't want you to kind of go one by one by one. I want you to think about those larger thematic concepts or ideas and tie multiple confessions or multiple um, testimonies to those central topics. So that was a long explanation, but hopefully it does give you guys a good understanding of the story, some of the elements, the literary elements that you can find in there as you move on to your next assignment.